Welcome to Let's Talk Horses. I'm your host, Jason Vance. Joining me today is Krishona Martinson, an extension equine specialist at the University of Minnesota. We're going to visit about poisonous plants. Now, Krishona, poisonous plants can be a big issue with horses, can't they? Absolutely. We see poison, poisonous plants concerns in pasture and hay, and we really do see it across the entire U.S. Now, what are some of the different plants that horse owners should be concerned about? Well, when we look for a broad spectrum across the United States, um, we really focus on some of the common trees. So, for example, maples, uh, the wilted maple leaves, not the fresh maple leaves, but the wilted maple leaves in the fall or after a storm, if the horses ingest them, there can be problems. The same thing with green acorns. Again, it's just the green acorns, not the mature brown acorns. Also, a tree species is black walnut. Black walnut is obviously a very um, sought-after woodworking wood, um, but when you use it in shavings, and usually people that are getting free shavings from like a furniture manufacturer, the black walnut, when the horse stands on it, it causes founder-like symptoms. So those are kind of three tree species that are widely seen across the U.S. Another one that tends to be more located on sandier soils is horealism. Not an issue in pasture, but mostly an issue when horses accidentally ingest it in hay, and we see a lot of stocking up in their back feet. But because hay is sold and bought across the whole United States, we see hay, maybe that's coming from the upper Midwest, going down south or out west, that can be contaminated with horealism. So again, these poisonous plants that we find in hay, because that's now a, a global market, we see it uh, throughout the United States. Now, not all poisonous plants are lethal, but they can cause some serious problems for horses. Yeah, absolutely. And one example would be foxtail. So foxtail is a weedy grass, and the head of the foxtail actually has awns. And the awns are little like hairs that stick off to the seeds. Well, when the awn connects to the seeds, it has, um, it almost has like a little hook. And when the horses eat those seed heads, they get the hooks in their mouth, and they get huge ulcers and sores in their mouths. And the horses tend to go off of feed, and the only way to really remove that is to surgically remove all those, which you can imagine is very expensive and has a pretty long recovery time. So again, that's one that's not gonna cause the horse you know, to die immediately after ingestion, but does cause a lot of problems um, for the horse. So what are some strategies to be used to control poisonous plants? So there's several strategies. I think the biggest thing is good pasture management and good management of the hay field. So when we look at pasture management, we wanna make sure that we're not overgrazing. Um, and if the horses do tend to lack grass, that we're supplementing them with some kind of hay. So for example, know your stocking rate. We really want to see horse pastures on average about two acres per horse with, with the expectation that the horse is getting a lot of their forage from that pasture you know, throughout the grazing season. Um, mowing is huge. Mowing kind of helps reset the pasture. It helps take down some of those weeds that are poisonous. And over time, mowing will help control some of those weeds. And then just resting the pasture. Let the pasture regrow. And while you have one paddock that's regrowing, you're obviously either feeding hay in a dry lot or they're grazing on another paddock. So good pasture management is the best place to start. Um, when we talk about hay fields, you know, make sure that you have a good cutting schedule, and that's really going to vary depending on where you are around the country. Many people cut on a 30 to 40 to a 60 day schedule, depending on where you're at in the country, whether it's grass or alfalfa. you got to keep the fertility up. Um, you know, forage plants that are well fertilized and well managed can really outcompete a lot of those weeds. But the biggest thing is if you have an area that is shady, um, maybe along a tree line, we know a lot of poisonous plants tend to reside in shade areas. The other place to really watch out for is swampy low areas. Anywhere where you have a swamp, a low area with some standing water and you have white flowers, um, that's a pretty good indication that those white flowered plants are probably toxic. A lot of them just happen to have white flowers and can be found in that swampy area. So sometimes it's just physically fencing horses out of that swamp, which has some other benefits too. Um, you know, a lot of insects, a lot of biting insects reside around swamps, and if your horse is shot or has shoes on, um, swampy areas can kind of suck those shoes off and cause problems. So sometimes it's just that physical barrier as well. So if a horse does ingest a poisonous plant, what course of action should you take? 
Well, you know, the first thing is you do want to confirm that the horse actually ingested the plant. So you're going to want to look for a half-eaten plant, look through the hay and see if you can find some other plant that, that you're suspicious of. Unfortunately, a lot of other diseases can have similar symptoms um, to ingesting a poisonous plant. So after you've confirmed the horse has ingested that poisonous plant, either by finding a half-eaten plant or finding it in their feed, the next thing is to make sure that the symptoms match. Um, there's a lot of websites that have information on symptoms associated with, with poisoning. And then finally, not all poisonous plants, but a vast majority of them have a diagnostic test. So the veterinarian could um, collect a blood sample or a urine sample and see if they can find the toxic compound. So evidence of ingestion, um, the symptoms match, and a diagnostic test are your three steps for most poisonous plants. Well, Krishna, thanks for being with us today. You're welcome.